much is above every other name. Father God, there's no one else like you. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We give you praise. Thank you that everything is about Jesus this morning. It's not about a man, it's about you. And we vow, Lord, that we will give you all the praise, all the glory. Thank you for your presence that is in this place. Thank you for the anointing that destroys yokes. Father, this morning we decree that no man will leave this place as they came. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost that will move across the airwaves all around the world. That the power of God shall make your people free. In the name of Jesus Christ, we worship you, Lord. We give you praise. Father, this morning we curse cancer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command the healing power of Christ to move in their homes right now. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you heal your people. Set the captives free by your power. Surely it's not by might, it's not by power. But it's by your spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. Come, there's a song that says in moments like this, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. Can we just sing that song for him? When everything falls apart in your life, you just lift up your hands and sing this song to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This morning we are desperate for you. This morning, Lord, we are pressing into the presence of God. As every eye is closed and every hand lifted, when you lift the hands, it's a sign of surrender. This morning I want you to understand, if you want to see the power of God, you can never see it outside of the presence. His power is in His presence. Seek His presence like never before. I feel the glory of God in this place. I want to tell this to the world. I want to release this word prophetically. And I'm not just saying this lightly. I believe South Africa needs to hear me. There's the greatest move of God coming to this nation. It's going to move across this nation. It will be such fire, such glory, such splendor that this nation has not yet seen. And I believe that God will use South Africa as the tipping point for the whole world 
we will see the glory of God shaking this nation to the very core. Thousands upon thousands will come to Jesus Christ. Thousands upon thousands will be healed, will be saved, will be delivered. This nation shall be shaken with the revival fire of God. I believe it with all my heart. Hear the word of God. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Get ready for a mighty move of God. Can somebody in this place give Jesus praise? Come on, if you believe it, I want you to say hallelujah. He's coming. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come, I want you to give Jesus the greatest shout of hallelujahs. Hallelujah. He's the King of kings and He's the Lord of lords. Do you believe it tonight? He's the King of kings and He's the Lord of lords. And everything is okay. Hallelujah. You can take your seat. Thank you so much. Great privilege to be back in East London, part of our family. Amen. And uh, this morning, I believe that God's going God's gonna to bless your heart. I've got, a, I've got a, a message for the world, and I believe that the Lord wants to speak to every individual. Now, the Bible says, I just quickly want to read this from Proverbs 29, verse 18. The NIV version, it says, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. I believe that the biggest need that we have in this world is a need of revelation. And I believe that when you have revelation, you will see the manifestation. Come on, who, who agrees with me this morning? We need revelation. And we have seen some of the video clips. Now, we just came from PE in Port Elizabeth. Now, something happened so mightily in Port Elizabeth. The last, the final night of the conference, the power of God shook that building. People were worshiping God. Now, this is the key. Who needs a miracle in this place? Come on, can I see your hand? The key is to be hungry. If you want God to accelerate you into the next dimension of miracles, the next dimension of breakthrough, you need to be hungry. Come on, am I speaking to you in this place? You need to be hungry for God. You need to be hungry for the presence of God. And in this place, in Port Elizabeth, the people were so hungry, so desperate. And the play, people were worshiping God. And it felt like the, the whole building was moving. And the power of God started falling, and a woman ran out of the crowd. She ran towards me, and she grabbed the mic. And she said to me, she was blind in both of her eyes. And the Lord opened both her eyes while she was crying out to him in a seat. Come on, now, the God, this God, the same Jesus is in this place, and he can do the same thing for you. They brought a woman with leprosy. This is the first time in my years of ministry that I saw a person with leprosy. Leprosy ate her whole body. And they carried her in to the meeting. That same meeting, this woman ran to the stage. And she started pulling, pulling up, uh, 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 she had a jersey on. She started pulling up the jersey. And she said to me, look at my arms. And as we looked to her, the leprosy disappeared right in front of our eyes. This is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But you see, the, the problem why many people do not believe that Jesus Many people think that Jesus healed 2,000 years ago, but not anymore today. You see, there's a lack of revelation. This world needs to understand who this Jesus is. Now, Paul came and Paul says that this Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In other words, Paul said the same Jesus in the past, in your present, and in your future. He will never change. If you believe that Jesus saves today, he forgives today, then you should also believe that he still heals today. I want to say something and I want to be very blunt. I believe that Jesus heals more today than he healed ever before. Come on, there's a move coming across the nations of the world and, and you have to get with it because we're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles like never before. Now, the lack there is, is revelation. You can see that right through the Bible, from, from Genesis right to Revelation, people had a revelation of who this God is. And when you have this revelation of who this God is, you do not need gimmicks. Come on, help me out in this place. You're just going to start to walk and experience in the fullness of the, of the Spirit, and you're going to see the power of God following your life. Adam had a revelation that this God is a God of seed. How do you say that? Because the Bible says that God said to the serpent, he said, that the seed of the woman shall crush your head. So Adam knew that this God, is a, this God is a God of revelation. He's a God of seed. Come on, the Bible says that he said to Noah that he is the God of covenant. Come on, somebody in this place needs to open their mouths and say, this God is a God of covenant. He said to Noah that you will see the rainbow in the skies, and that will be that you will be reminded of my covenant that I have with the earth. He's a God of covenant. 
Come on, you can never experience this God of covenant unless you have a revelation that He is the same yesterday, He is the same today, and He's the same forevermore. He's a God of covenant. Come on, the Bible says that Abraham calls Him the provider. Abraham had a revelation that God provides. You have to tell your neighbor, God still provides today. You see, you can never experience, many people run to services because they want provision. Don't seek provision, seek the provider. Everything that you need, if you need provision, provision comes from the provider. And I believe this with all my heart, it's time that we put Jesus back on the pedestal. Come on, South Africa and the world needs to hear this. When we put Jesus on the pedestal, not man, but Jesus Christ, He will provide you every need. He will heal your body. He will touch your ministry. He will touch schools. If Jesus be lifted up, He will draw man unto Him. Abraham had this revelation that this God is a God that provides. Remember, he said to Isaac, God himself will provide. And when God provided the ram, what does the Bible say? That Abraham said, God provided. So God is the provider. But please hear me out. He still provides today. You need revelation about who this God is. You see, God is a gentleman. And people need to understand this. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will never force himself in you. People need to get God out of the box. You see, many people want to experience the supernatural. We talk about the supernatural. But folks cannot take you where they haven't been. Amen? If you haven't been in the presence of God, how can you take somebody into the presence of God? If you haven't tasted the supernatural, how can you take people into the supernatural presence of God? So in other words, before you can enter that dimension, you need constant revelation. The supernatural comes through revelation. Come on, help me out in this place. If you believe it, say hallelujah in this place. Revelation comes for obviously you need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to know God. And revelation comes through this. So the word of God says that he's a provider. He still provides. Amen. The Bible says that he said to Abraham, well, I'm going to make a covenant with you as well. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your children. I'm going to bless your great-grandchildren. So Abraham knew him as the God of blessing. Come on, say he's the God of blessing. You're sitting in this place. God will bless your children for your sake. Come on. You have to say, Lord, I'm in covenant with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And because I'm in covenant with you, it means that my children will be blessed. My grand-grand-grandchildren will be blessed because my covenant that I have with you. And he never breaks a covenant. Hallelujah. The Bible says Moses, when Moses inquired from God, you see, God said to Moses, I'm going to use you. I'm going to send you to Egypt. You're going to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. He said, hang on, hang on. First, tell me, who are you? If I go, let me, just, just help me. If I, if I go to Egypt and they ask me who have sent you, I must know who's my backing. Who backs you? Might not be Absa Bank today, but it's Jehovah Jireh. Come on. It is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Who are you? And and God said to him, I am that I am. You tell that Pharaoh, I am that I am. Moses had a revelation that God, and hear me now, God is not I was, not I will be, he's I am. People say, well, maybe God's time is not my time. I want to ask you the question, when is God's time? If God's time is not now, when is God's time? Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, if it's not now, it's not faith. Is that correct? Come on, so he's the God of the now. He's not the God that will be. He said to Moses, I am. I am your healer. I am your provider. I am your source. I am your hope. I am your joy. I am your peace. Come on, saints of God. I am that I am. Moses had a revelation that this God is the bread of heaven. Remember when he walked from Egypt, bread, the, man, the Bible says manna came from heaven. He had a revelation that Christ is the bread of heaven. The word of God says that he had a revelation that Christ is the rock of ages. The word of God says that Jesus, well, whenever, whenever they needed water, he either had to smite the, a rock he had to struck it or he had to speak to a rock. The Bible says when, when Moses was worshiping and his ha- or when he was in war, he, he, he fought a war and when his hands were lifted up, he won over, over Amalek, his enemy. Come on, help me out in this place. The minute his arms were getting tired, the enemy won him. So the Bible says he got Aaron and her and they sat him upon a rock. 
Now listen to me. This is what the Bible says. They sat him, they placed him upon a rock. So Moses was seated upon the rock before Jesus Christ walked on this earth. Moses was seated with Christ, come on, on the rock. He had a revelation who this God is. He is the rock of ages. Oh, hallelujah. Moses had a revelation that this God is the God of wonders. Moses couldn't just show up in Egypt and say, well, now one, signs and wonders must appear. If Moses didn't have a revelation that his will, God's will is to heal. God's will is to save. God's will is to deliver. Do you believe that today in this place? So Moses had this constant revelation about who this God is. And Moses knew that this God is all-powerful. The same God that showered bread from heaven is the same God that will open the eyes of the blind. He's the same God that will open the Red Sea. Come on, he's the same God that will perform signs, wonders, and miracles if you have a revelation about who this God is. Come on, who is this God to you this morning? Do you have constant revelation that he's the God that provides? Now, I love this, what Exodus 15 says. Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the God who heals you. Moses had a revelation that our God is a healer. If you drive a Toyota and the Toyota breaks down and you take it to VW, VW is going to tell you, listen, we can't fix it. Take it to Toyota. Well, I'm using, actually, I'm using a bad example because we all know Toyota does not break down. <laughs> All right, but say, this, say for instance that Toyota breaks down. When you take it to Toyota, Toyota's not going to tell you, well, we made it, but we can't fix it. Toyota will say, no problem, we'll fix it. Do you agree with me today? The same with God. If He created you, He can fix you up. He can heal you. He can restore you. Oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, hallelujah. A revelation that this God is the God that heals. Now, if Jesus does not heal today anymore, it means he's a respecter of man. And then the book of Hebrews, as it says that Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever, does not apply anymore. But if it's written in this Bible, then you have to listen to me. This Bible must be taken up literally. This is the word of God. This word never changes. People's opinions changes regarding the Word of God, but the Word of God never changes. It stands firm today. He's the healer, saints of God. Come on, somebody shout out, He's the healer. One more time, He's the healer. Say it again, He's the healer. Joshua had a revelation. The Bible says that he saw a man with a sword in his hand, and, and Joshua ran towards him and he said, Are you with me or are you against me? And the angel of the Lord said to him, he is the commander and chief of the armies of the God. And he understood, he had a revelation that our God is a mighty warrior. I said, our God is a mighty warrior. That's why God says that you do not have to fight in a battle. He will fight your battles for you. Because our God is a fighter. Come on, somebody say, our God is a fighter. Mighty to save. Come on, he's mighty to save. Get revelation in your heart, and revelation comes through the Holy Spirit. And when revelation comes, the super will become natural to you. The super must be natural. Come on. I said the super must be natural. But revelation, when revelation comes, when revelation hits your house, it changes everything about you. It changes your children. Come on, it changes the people that you get in contact with. He's the God of constant revelation. Oh, hallelujah. David experienced this God as a God of worship. He had a revelation that our God wants to be worshipped. And the Bible says David was a man of the God's own heart because David was a worshipper. Am I speaking to somebody in this place? Isaiah had a revelation that they're going to call him servant. He will be a servant. He had a revelation that Jesus is a servant. The word of God says Isaiah had a, re a revelation and he started calling him wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. I want to tell you he is wonderful. He is everlasting father. He is counselor. Come on, he is the prince of peace. So if you have a revelation that he's a prince of peace, then you can be in peace. If you have a revelation that our God is a counselor, then you do not need human counseling. You, you sit in a council of the almighty God. We need revelation. Saints of God, we need revelation. If people understand, if you get God out of the box because he's too big to fit in a box, 
we'll start to experience the God of the Bible. You see, the book of Acts was not just written for our enjoyment. The book of Acts is a model of how the church should operate today. With signs, wonders, and miracles, souls should be added daily. The Bible does not, if you read the fruit of the book of Acts, it should actually say the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit moved in power. I said the Holy Spirit moved in power. They had a revelation who, about who He is and how He operates and how He works. And when you have this revelation, you'll start to operate in the same wonders. You remember that we saw that, that girl, 16 years old, she was blind for 15 years. Her eyes opened, her eye opened up completely. She's restored and they got saved. Do you know what happens when you have revelation that Jesus is still a healer and a miracle worker? You'll start to operate in the same things. Because you start, when you start to walk on this earth, you represent God. But how can you represent something that you do not have revelation about? If you work for a company but you do not know your product, what's the use working there? You can't, you can't, come on, help me out in this place. You can't represent a company that you do not even know how the products work. How can you represent God and the kingdom on this earth if you do not know how to operate the gift things and you do not know how to operate the power of God? We need revelation. We need revelation. Oh, hallelujah. Elijah experienced him as the God that provides. And here you need to hear me right now. The Bible says that God told Elijah that there will be ravens and ravens will come and ravens will feed him. Amen. And do you know what the Bible says? That as Elijah went and he obeyed the voice of God, ravens came and ravens started feeding him. You need to hear me. God will send ravens to feed you. And God will supply your every need. And let me just help you there. The Bible says when the ravens stopped, now, the supply of God didn't stop. The vehicle that drove the miracle changed. When the raven stopped, the supply didn't stop. The miracle that drove the miracle, or the, 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 the vehicle that drove the miracle, it just changed. So the Bible says, wait a minute, I already supplied a widow for you. Now, this widow was at the last, and I'm getting somewhere. She was at the last. She said, she's going to eat, the son's going to eat, and then they're going to die. She said, I've just got a little bit of oil, a little bit of flour. Elijah said, hang on. If you give to me first to eat, you will have more than enough. And the, the woman obeyed. You see, this woman was not, she was not moved according to her need. She was not need conscious. She was seed conscious. She knew that if I'm going to give the seed unto the man of God, I'm going to collide with my confession. And you know what? The Bible says in the Old Testament, if you honored a prophet, you didn't go, with, go to him with empty hands. You honored the man of God. And as, they honored, as she honored, God blessed her. And, and Elijah again understood, this is the God that provides. And let me tell you, the widow will be supplied for you. But then your miracle is going to be so big that the ravens can't bring it to you anymore. And it's so big that this widow can't carry it anymore. Then the Bible says God supplied an angel. And the angel fed Elijah. Do you hear what I'm telling you today, East London? The ravens will stop because it's too small to bring in the next harvest and the next size of miracles. And then God will supply a widow. And then the widow will sustain you for a season. And then the miracle will be too big again. And then God will send forth his angels. But you have to hear me. He's the God that will provide. He will provide for you. He will provide for you and he will provide for you just have revelation in your heart that this is a caring Jesus hallelujah am I speaking to somebody in this place if you believe that he's a God that provides I want you to say hallelujah come on say it one more time hallelujah he's the God that provides all our needs let me tell you there's no turmoil in heaven everything is sorted out Hallelujah. Come on, saints of God. I feel a, a, the Spirit of God in this place getting people ready to experience breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. Come on, do you feel it in this place? You see, this is exactly what the anointing does. It destroys yokes of bondages. Elisha, Elisha understood that he is, he is the God of miracles. He's the God of miracles. Now hear me. Zechariah understood something. He's the God that, that does not operate only through might and power, but through the Spirit. Zechariah said the following. He said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my Spirit. In these last days, we're going to see a move of the Spirit of God that will not be man-made, fabricated by man. You see, the anointing does not come through performance. It comes through surrender. 
And I believe that we're going to see a generation rising up, a nameless, faceless generation, that God will use them to do exploits on the face of this earth. We will see acts coming to life again. Hear the word of God, a generation that will have a revelation. Come on. Vessel and Eileen DeBrain, ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ and founders of Vessel DeBrain Ministries, would like to partner with you and welcome you to join our global movement. Through being the hands and the feet of God, we have been privileged to be part of the precious lives being saved, healed, and transformed. Many hands make light work. So we encourage you to join us in committing to be a monthly partner by sending a financial gift to help us fulfill our mandate from God in this time and age to reach and touch 700 million souls with God's unconditional love and the reviving fire of the Holy Spirit. It is by the Spirit of God that we have seen thousands upon thousands delivered and it is our heart to preach and reach millions more who have no hope and who are in need. Hosting regular revival meetings in various places and countries, exciting a movement that will wash over many souls through the impact of one ministry supported by the many generous partners. We encourage you to pray for us and to connect with us on social media platforms or visit our website at www.vesseldebrain.com. We are trusting God for 300 monthly committed partners. You will be an instrumental part of changing the lives of the lost, hurt and broken. Providing families on a monthly basis with basic food and clothing. Enabling us to keep running our weekly program on television and aiding us to minister the gospel worldwide. We love and appreciate your generous assistance in this venture, as well as your prayers, your encouragement and motivation. Become a partner today.